Welcome to Monday, April 12, 2021. Unfortunately, folks, for those of you wanting some nice warm spring weather, we don't have it. We have a prolonged spell of cold and occasionally wet weather. Now, the wet is good. A lot of you don't like the cold, and I don't blame you. But April, as we mentioned last week, is a cruel month. We're going to have areas of rain, areas of snow, areas of fog with below normal temperatures all week into the weekend. It, it's going to be a while, folks, before we have some warm spring days coming, especially along and east of the divide. West of the Continental Divide, well, you're not going to be as cold, but even as we get to the end of the week and the weekend, you'll cool off as well. Now, this is not a repeat of the March storm. It's a different setup. But stock growers and travelers, you need to monitor the weather because there will be livestock concerns for some cold, wet conditions at times and some wet snow. Travel will also be impacted. The mountain passes, the higher elevations of I-80 and I-25 will have some snow and some fog and some icy conditions at times, especially the nights and the mornings. So stock growers and travelers, keep an eye on the weather situation. And it's going to be a while. It's going to be a while before we have a really big prolonged warm up. So unfortunately, you're just going to have to suffer through the next five to seven days and maybe a little longer. And this is why today we have an upper level low centered over Minnesota. Notice, though, the elongation of the trough goes all the way back to the Pacific Northwest coast. It's just a very broad area of low pressure. As we mentioned last week, we saw a similar setup during the Arctic outbreak of February where we had a, an upper level low going along the U.S. Canadian border. A piece of it broke off and was able to bring in some very cold air that's sitting up here across portions of north central Canada. And it's a similar situation. It's just the April version. And as we go forward, what will happen is this low will split apart with this low right here breaking off from the main low and then sitting over the Great Basin. And when that happens, cold air really splits spills in and goes along in east of the Continental Divide and moves into this part of North America. And there you are. These are temperatures by noon today relative to average. So all the blue and the green and the purple has below average temperatures. And again, bringing back what happened in February, this big north-south, this big cross-latitudinal change in temperature is really quite remarkable going across a large part of North America. So the door to Canada has just gotten left open. Now here it is, that low breaking off, actually migrating all the way back into Northeast California, Northwestern portions of Nevada and Oregon. And then with the main low here, still spinning up over Oregon and Wisconsin. Now some keen observers might say, well, Don, there's a high pressure ridge building in between these two systems. Well, actually there is, but it's high pressure over a really cold air mass that's coming in right here. So what will happen is, is that, yeah, high pressure is going to come in, but it's going to be associated with cold air on the ground and a loft, the counterclockwise rotation around this low is going to throw moisture from the Pacific over and on top of that cold air. We call that overrunning. And by Tuesday night into Wednesday, we see a big sloshing cold air mass, say sloshing because it's cold and dense air that's going to be coming across the high plains and Rockies. Now notice the western slope of Colorado on Tuesday and west of the divide here in the Great Basin, it's still warm. The cold air is really being held up by the Continental Divide, but some of that cold air will leak over the divide later in the week. This is by Thursday night and Friday. The low that's up here gets a little bit elongated and stretched out, and then we have an upper level low that comes across the area Thursday night and Friday. The way the moisture will pan out with this system is, is that there'll be a little bit of moisture coming in late Tuesday, Tuesday night, and Wednesday, producing some light snows and rains, nothing really heavy. But this secondary low right here, as it comes across the area later in the week, this is going to end up producing the heavier precipitation as we go through. And this is by Saturday morning. The cold air is well entrenched from Texas to the Dakotas up into southern areas of Canada. And you can see the blue now spilling over the divide into Utah, western Colorado, into Idaho. You can see the colder air gets a little bit deeper and a little bit further west. This is the upper level low and the surface low pressure systems working together. We showed you a graphic like this on Friday. 
where the cold area of high pressure sinking in from Canada, the clockwise circulation around this high brings an easterly wind. The counterclockwise rotation around the low brings an east southeasterly wind. And you can see right here, these lines are lines of equal air pressure. So we have the low west of the divide drawing moisture in from the east and also the cold air from Canada gets packed up against the front range. So the front range in Eastern Plains will have the coldest weather. You get into the mountains and west of the divide, it's not gonna be as cold. But along and east of the divide, folks, it could be days before there's any significant amount of sunshine. So any sunshine we see, and mainly it's gonna be today, is gonna be fleeting and very brief. This is what the precipitation through Sunday morning looks like. This is nothing like the March storm, as we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. But you see all the blue and the green and the yellows. The yellows represent possibly an inch or more of water equivalent from both rain and snow. As you get into the blue colors, you're talking about a half to three quarters of an inch and the greens up to about a quarter of an inch or so. You can see that the mountains of Wyoming and Colorado and part of the Wasatch here will get some nice snow in the higher elevations. And along the higher terrain of southeastern Wyoming, northeastern Colorado, and southwest Nebraska here, especially what we call the Cheyenne Ridge, where you're up a little bit higher in altitude, you're gonna see some heavy wet snows. Wet snows will also get into Denver and into Esses Park and into some of the Front Range Mountain areas there and back up into the Central Mountains of Colorado. Along and south of Interstate 70, unfortunately, those areas which need the moisture really aren't gonna get much out of the system. If you convert that to snow, you can see the higher terrain is gonna see the wet snow. And it's going to be an April snow. So what'll happen is during the nights and the mornings, the snow will stick better and it will accumulate during the day. Even though temperatures are probably gonna be below freezing in many areas, that April sun gets a lot of energy through those clouds. And so what'll happen is you'll get a wet snow during the day that will probably melt but wet snows, nights and mornings accumulating. As you get up along the higher elevations of Interstate 80, you know, that's where we mentioned there's gonna be some travel concerns along those higher elevations of Interstate 80 this week. Taking a look at precipitation amounts since April 1st, we wanna show you that we need this moisture. Despite all of that great March moisture for April so far, these are for the first 11 days of April. You see all the brown? Look at all the brown out here. You know, so April has started off really dry. The exception, parts of South Dakota, Southern Montana, and Northern Wyoming here have had a good start to April, but the rest of the West still is in a deficit. So hopefully this April moisture that we get from this storm will help out with some of this dryness. And if you look at the latest drought monitor from late last week, you can still see Colorado, Wyoming, Western Kansas, Western Nebraska, the Dakotas, Montana, the western slope of Colorado back into Utah, and we still have very droughty conditions. So we need this moisture, but it will be a little bit of a nuisance because it will be so cold and damp, it's just not gonna make for very nice weather. Taking a look at the longer term, this is by Sunday into Monday of next week. So the low begins to retreat off to the east, but notice that the winds aloft, we look at the wind barbs here, are still coming in from the north, northwest, into the High Plains region here. And you see this guy right here? This is a potential cold front that'll bring in some colder Canadian air into the early parts of next week. If this develops, then it's not going to be until after maybe Wednesday or Thursday of next week before the warmer air that's gonna build along the West Coast is able to come into the Rockies and the High Plains. And you can see this, these are temperatures relative to average for Tuesday morning of next week. So you can see a large part of the nation is just downright cold, including the Rockies and the High Plains, into the Great Lakes, and even into Florida. So this middle part of April for a large part of the U.S. is going to be cold, but you can see this right here. You can see from Alaska along the west coast of Canada, warmer than average temperatures are building off to the east with some high pressure. So the second half of next week is when we can expect it to get warmer, but not until then. Thanks for listening and watching the Day Weather Podcast. We'll see you tomorrow.